You know, the parallels between Star as a show and Thor in the MCU just keep piling up. Losing one eyes, losing their weapons, and now having to forge new ones? And you know, they're both owned by Disney. I smell a conspiracy. Or a coincidence. One or the other. Welcome back to Muni Mayhem on the Roundtable. I'm Osric Vox, and last time we discussed why Star will never get her wand back. The one she gave to Eclipsa will remain in Eclipsa's possession unless Eclipse is either killed, retired, or gets the wand destroyed. Ideally, she'd have it long enough until Meteor is of age, and simply pass it along to her. But from a narrative standpoint, it'd be backtracking Star's development to just go, oops, gimme backsies. Bottom line, you have to earn everything in Star vs. the Force of Evil. As a character, Star's story seems to be about losing everything she knew. Her family history, her family spellbook, and now, the family wand. But we see Star counteract this. Crafting stories to make new history, correcting her family's mistakes, making a new spellbook, and now, I believe she's going to forge a new wand. Although, let's be honest, this is a theory many people have come up with. Although, I haven't really read much into them, yet I feel like this is the logical next step to take. And it was something foreshadowed. Fans throughout the last few months have deducted that in Storm the Castle, after Star recites the Whispering Spell, the spirit of the mill horse whispers, I was never your wand. And that matches up perfectly. And under that context, it definitely fits into the narrative. And hey, the series has shown how to destroy wands with the Whispering Spell. Wands are powered by the Mill Horse within. The Whispering Spell simply kills that Mill Horse, as morbid as that is. We've seen the destruction and rebirth of the wand twice already. Yet, it seems as if when Star used the Whispering Spell for the first time, the Butterfly family already had a second Mill Horse to, you know, to take precautions. Better safe than sorry. Yet Star birthed the third one, creating it with the last of her magic. But I think it's fair to ask, is it possible for Star to make a new wand? And <laughs> yes, they've already planted the seeds on how to make one, including plot threads as early as season one. Now the wand composes of various parts, and props to Star Wiki for listing all of them. First, there's a star-shaped crystal, the focusing point for spellcasting, the bell, which is the head of the wand, that houses the mill and magic core, the mill itself being a literal treadmill, run by a mill horse, which grinds the crystals from the wand, exerting its power throughout. The grip, of course, is the wand's handle. From there, we got the charger port, the wand's base where the charger is plugged in, and finally, the wand's battery, something that can be bought at Quest Buy, an element that was introduced in Season 1. I don't believe it's out of the realm of possibility that Darren Nessy had this planned out since day one that it was more than just a plot thread for a single episode. She knew this would come back into play later. And while the crystal, bell, mill, the grip, I'm sure that all can be forged out various substances on Muni. Hell, Romulus makes crystals. Omnitraxis deals with space-time. Hecapoo forges scissors. I'm sure they can all come together to forge a new wand. Hell, that could be Arkin itself, giving Sar a reason to reconcile with them and see through their differences. But the Mill Horse is by far the most important aspect as it is the power source. Although, oddly enough, we haven't seen the current Mill Horse, dubbed as the Firstborn, actually power the treadmill. It seems as if that was something either altered in Season 3, or the treadmill was just kind of metaphorical, an illustration of the realm of magic. At this moment in time, it's rather unclear. But if the Firstborn is powering Eclipse's wand, what will be the power source for her wand, that gateway between her and the realm of magic? Luckily, the episode Deep Dive introduced a slew of more unicorns that had the same appearance as the firstborn when Star first created it, meaning over time, all these unicorns will mature, if they're not already by Star's next trip to the realm of magic in Season 4. And while the unicorns, the soon-to-be mill horses, were very welcoming of Star in Deep Dive, they all changed their tune during Conquer. The Firstborn actually sending Star back to her castle. And much like Glossaric, I believe Magic, and by extension the Mill Horses, are a true neutral. They don't have a side. They're neither good or evil. Thus, Star will need a compelling reason for one of the Mill Horses to guilt their existence and spend the rest of their days powering her wand. Which is doable. I just think Star has to watch out. As we never saw what happened to the Unicorn, who was consuming the River of Dark Magic. 
originating from Moon, washing away her bonds with Eclipsa. It's possible that even if that unicorn doesn't taint the realm of magic, it could still have the potential to corrupt Star's magic, and that unicorn will surely be a plot point in the upcoming season. And if we want to get really weird and really wild, there's also the crystal or chess diamond that Rhymeless gave Star. I believe they were named John and Jack. Star has one of them, which one I'm not completely sure of, but perhaps one of them could act as Star's new crystal for her wand. Who knows, maybe she'll have two wands in this season. The makeshift one she forges before creating a proper one entirely. And even without a wand, it's not like Star's defenseless. Wands are just used to focus magic, make it easier to cast spells. But Star can use magic without a wand, she just has to excel at dipping down. So I think we can expect some combat without a wand throughout the season. So when will we see Star's new wand? I have a few ideas. One, the opening for every season of Star always starts with a shot of the wand. So perhaps she'll obtain one early on in the season, one to accompany the theme song. However, I don't see Star creating a new wand unless she's in a desperate situation, where she feels as if she needs one and dipping down just ain't cutting it yet. So this may be the least likely. However, I think the highest points would be the mid-season or proper season finale. In the past, both of these episodes are used as high points for the season's arc, accompanied with a big reveal or change in the status quo. I expect season four to be no different and either of those would be the perfect time. Now, if season four is the final season, then maybe the season premiere would make sense. Or the mid-season finale. Although, I would love to take the Samurai Jack approach, how Jack lost his sword in season five and he got it back towards the end of the season, and then the show got really bad from there, uh... But yes, we obviously have not seen the last of Star's spellcasting dates with a wand. And every season introduces a new wand. Can you blame the crew for that? Designing all these wands must be very, very fun. There's probably so many drafts we haven't even seen. Hell, the storyboard for Toffee included a design for the wand that we didn't even get to see. And while I believe the previous iteration of Star's wand matched her character perfectly, showcasing her horns and her wings, I think they have the opportunity to make a wand that suits her 110%, even greater than the last one. Blow our expectations out of the water, Nefsi. But this is where I turn the conversation over to you guys. What do you think? Can you see Star forging a new wand? Or do you think she'll just be wandless for the rest of the series? Or even, she'll get her old one back from Eclipses some way, somehow? Let us know in the comments below, or tweet those thoughts for the Timmy Dostrick Thoughts, or at the Roundtable on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Roundtable Bids. You can also let us know on Stardust. Link in the description. If you want to help us grow, join the Roundtable on Patreon. Get access to exclusive perks, like our scripts, avatars, exclusive updates, and so much more. You can even have your name featured at the end of the video like all these beautiful, wonderful people. Also swing by our store, pick up some merch. Links to everything in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, stay in the loop with all things Star. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ultra Vox out.